Hi, when do altcoins actually go up? Is there a way to determine when alt season starts? In this video, we're going to talk about correlation between different cryptocurrencies. Because it's very important to time the market, right? If you own an altcoin, for example here Cardano in this case, you can easily lose more than 90%. So you actually want to be invested only when altcoins pump and when you can get this multiple X on your investment. So determining the right timing of when altcoins in general pump or when they dump is really, really important. Now the straightforward way of doing this is basically just looking at Bitcoin, right? So people say when Bitcoin goes up, everything else goes up. When Bitcoin is sneezing, the entire crypto market gets sick. So you would basically take the Bitcoin market cycles as a proxy for when to time the altcoin speculation, right? You would only try to speculate in altcoins when Bitcoin rises and when you expect Bitcoin to fall, you would get out of altcoins. Now that's one approach, but it's not without its problems. And that's because when Bitcoin goes up, altcoins don't have to necessarily rally, or at least they don't have to necessarily outperform. When you, for example, look at this altcoin rally that happened from the beginning of 2019 to the beginning of 2021, so those two years, we can see that Bitcoin grew by approximately 800%. Now, when we look at the Bitcoin dominance during this time, we can see that the dominance went from 56% to 70%. So Bitcoin became a larger fraction of the overall market. Or in other words, the crypto market was really positive, right? We made 800% profit in Bitcoin, but the more risky altcoins, they did not outperform. You would expect that when you have smaller altcoins that with this increased risk, you would get more performance during positive times, during rallies. But that's not what happened over here in those two years. Bitcoin, the safer asset, it grew faster, it grew quicker than the altcoins. So just looking at Bitcoin is probably not a very good indicator. It's not the right proxy to determine should you trade altcoins or should you be outside of altcoins. So you rather want to look at correlation and that's this chart over here. This is a table that shows cross correlation between different crypto assets. So we've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Chili's, CRV token, Polkadot, Chainlink, Tron, XRP and Quant. So these are all altcoins that I've discussed on this channel. And you can see the correlation coefficient of the daily returns between those assets. Now, what does correlation mean? Correlation measures how much assets move in tandem to each other. So at the same day, are two assets more likely to go in the same direction? So let's say we've got asset A and asset B and most of the time they go in similar directions. So this would be a high correlation between two assets. Or do we rather have negative correlation? So that would be in this case in blue. When one asset goes up, the other asset is more likely to go down and vice versa. Now, the reason why correlation is important is for two things, right? When you have high correlation, that means you can use one asset to kind of mimic the other asset's returns. So, for example, if you can't buy physical gold, if you're limited to only buying stocks, you might decide to instead buy gold mines, right? And gold mines, their revenue is dependent on the gold price. So you would likely see the gold price and the gold mine stocks to have very highly correlated returns. So you can use different assets as proxy if you've got high correlation. On the other hand, when you've got low correlation or even negative correlation, you can use them to combine those two assets in a portfolio with low volatility. So for example, if we were to combine a portfolio out of blue and green, our portfolio line would look something like this, right? So it's very similar in terms of returns. It wouldn't really matter if you buy red or green or if you construct a portfolio out of those two assets. You still have very similar fluctuations. However, if you combine a portfolio out of green and blue that are negatively correlated, you get a resulting portfolio line that is basically, you get a resulting portfolio line that has basically no fluctuations at all. And that's what you want, right? You want price appreciation without the price risk. So when you combine portfolios, look for low or even negative correlation. When you look for proxies to determine, for example, should I be in altcoins in general or not, look for high correlation. 
Now, when we go back to the table again, what we can see obviously is that Bitcoin to Bitcoin has a one correlation. So they move the same, it's the same asset. And you have this for every asset over here, right? So you've got the ones over here, perfect correlation between the same assets. Now, when we look at the correlation between Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's 0 0.75. So the closer the correlation is to one, the more likely the assets are to move in tandem. And so these values, they are just mirrored over here. You see the exact same value here in the colored side of the chart as you see over here on the white area of the chart. Now, it's interesting when you look at this correlation, right? The correlation between Bitcoin and Ethereum with 0 0.75 is the highest. So Bitcoin doesn't correlate as much with any of the other altcoins. And it seems to be that the larger the market cap of the altcoin, the more likely it is to correlate with Bitcoin. So you've got more quote unquote unique price movements, the smaller your altcoin is in terms of market cap. But what you can also see, and that's the main point of this video, is that when you compare each altcoin's correlation to Bitcoin and to Ethereum, you see that the correlation between the altcoin and Bitcoin is smaller than between the altcoin and Ethereum. So look at this, Cardano is correlated 0 0.68 with Bitcoin, but 0 0.77 with Ethereum. So Ethereum is a better proxy for a Cardano investment than Bitcoin. So if you can figure out how Ethereum is going to move, you've probably a pretty good grasp of how Cardano is going to move. They are moving quite similarly. Now, on the other hand, if you have a portfolio and you combine Ethereum and Cardano into one portfolio and you've got nothing else, you might as well just have one of those assets simply because they return so similar. Now, let's look at the correlations between those other altcoins, right? For Chili's, the Ethereum correlation and the Bitcoin correlation is pretty much the same. For CRV, the Bitcoin correlation is lower than the one for Ethereum. For DOT, the same. For LINK, the same. Tron, XRP, Quant. For all of those altcoins, the correlation to Ethereum is higher than to Bitcoin. So what you actually should look at when deciding whether or not to trade altcoins, what you actually should look at is Ethereum and not Bitcoin. Ethereum is on average a much better proxy for determining how your altcoin in general will behave. And this here looks all pretty theoretical, right? But we can actually also see this when we simply look at returns, right? So when did this big altcoin rally recently start? It was at the beginning of the year, right? So Bitcoin dominance over here, it fell sharply since the beginning of the year from 70% all the way down to 45%. So Bitcoin wasn't doing as well. But if we look at the dominances of other coins, so let's say now Ethereum, we can see for Ethereum's dominance since the beginning of the year, it went up from around 14% to currently around 19%. And we can see a similar increase of dominance in other altcoins. Since the beginning of the year, altcoin dominance has rallied. So this is ADA. Here we've got Polkadot, XRP, Dogecoin, Tron. So they all went up. All those altcoin dominances went up, as did Ethereum. So it's really a matter of how is Ethereum doing. If you're trading altcoins, look at Ethereum. That's your best proxy. It shows in the correlation data. It also shows simply in the charts. Now, what's the fundamental reason for this? I personally think the kind of investors that get into Ethereum and that get into Bitcoin typically are different. Bitcoin investors, they mainly DCA into the market, right? They buy every month. They hold it for the long term. It's virtual gold. You might sell it in a few years. You're not actively trading in and out of Bitcoin that often. You can also see this in terms of the number of transactions that are done on the Bitcoin blockchain. If you compare those transactions to Ethereum, you see a really big difference, right? Ethereum is traded much more often, much more aggressively. It's traded against other altcoins, but it's also traded against stable coins. So there's more active buying and selling going on. And as such, I think Ethereum mimics the characteristics of altcoins much more. Altcoins are used much more for speculation, much less for long-term holding, right? There's very few people that DCA into Polkadot or into Tron and buy every month a certain amount of Tron, thinking that the price will go up over the long term. There's much more people that get into those altcoins, look at relative valuations, 
between different coins, look at trends and try to time the market and get in and out of the coin. And so since the investors are the same or they are comparatively similar between Ethereum and altcoins and they're pretty different to the people that buy Bitcoin, I think it's expected that we see a relatively high correlation between Ethereum and the altcoins, at least a relatively higher correlation of Ethereum than of Bitcoin. Now, how important is the Ethereum performance compared to the altcoins performance when you trade altcoins? Or in other words, how much time and effort should you put into trying to time the market with Ethereum versus trying to find the right altcoin? What's the more important part of the equation? Is timing 80 or 90% of everything and you could just focus most of your effort on just timing the Ethereum market? Or is the individual altcoin's performance actually different enough to justify looking at the different altcoin? So let's maybe look at Cardano because Cardano had quite a run recently. Let's see how much outperformance Cardano did versus Ethereum and how much Ethereum in general performed during this time. So let's take the altcoin rally that started at the beginning of the year. So here we've got Ethereum and since the beginning of the year, Ethereum in US dollar terms made around 200%. Now how much did Cardano versus Ethereum do during this time? So this is the Cardano chart priced in Ethereum. And when we look at this performance, we can see a 150% increase. So Ethereum versus Fiat gained more than Cardano versus Ethereum. So in this specific example, it would have been more important to time the market and find out that there is altcoin season starting at the beginning of the year than it would have been to pick the right altcoin. And here we already got a very positive example, right? This is Cardano. Let's look at the relative performance of, say, Polkadot since the beginning of the year. Polkadot versus Ethereum was actually losing. So we lost 43% versus Ethereum. So already by just combining Cardano and Polkadot in an altcoin portfolio, you would have only slightly outperformed Ethereum, but you would have still made some gains in US dollar terms. But those gains are mainly derived from Ethereum going up, from like the overall market going up. The picture doesn't look that different for Chainlink. In Chainlink, we lost 48% versus Ethereum. Same story for Tron. Tron lost as well versus Ethereum. And for Zilliqa, for example, it looks really bad. Almost 70% underperformance since the beginning of the year versus Ethereum. So what that means, it really makes sense to focus on timing the market, the overall crypto market, the Ethereum market. That's much more of a contribution to your fiat performance than picking the right coin. Even if you pick the winner, in this example Cardano, this pick alone is less of a contributor to your overall performance than finding the top or bottom of the overall market. So it makes sense to focus most of the research energy, not at the individual crypto project, but at timing the overall market. And so the real question that makes or breaks the performance is, where is this chart going to go? The Ethereum to US dollar chart. Is this going to crash or is this going to rise? This is the best proxy for figuring out future performance. It's not discovering this little altcoin gem. It's not determining where Bitcoin is going, but it's really important where Ethereum is going. And once you have a grasp of that, it makes sense to buy or sell altcoins. So in case you don't know yet, I show this on my channel all the time. What I like to do in order to determine where Ethereum tends to go is that I look at moving averages. I look at two moving averages specifically, the 23-day moving average here in light blue and in dark blue, the 39-day moving average. And the reason why I look at those moving averages is that in the past, when you backtest moving averages, they have worked the best. So if you buy and sell according to moving averages, you buy whenever the price is above the moving average, you sell whenever the price goes below the moving average. You do this every day, you look at the end of day price, you backtest that strategy, you find out that the 23 day moving average returns the best 166% per annum versus buying and holding only 56% per annum. And the second best is the 39 day moving average with 144% per annum. So this is again the backtesting result in gray, the portfolio line in white, the price of Ethereum in purple, the moving average 
And when the price is below the moving average, we are completely in cash. When the price is above the moving average, we follow the price movements. And when you backtest this, you see your portfolio line is above just buying and holding. And this works best for the 23 day and for the 39 day. So those are the different portfolio lines. They also help you not being in the market when everything turns bearish. So 23 and 39 day. You want to look at those two moving averages to gauge where Ethereum tends to go. And so this is a chart plotted with those two moving averages. And we can see recently we have broken the 23 day moving average. So that's very positive. Note that before that moving average had actually been a resistance. So we fell below and then we bounced off that moving average quite a bit. And now just recently we came above it and we are now fighting with the 39 day moving average. So for me, it wouldn't be that surprising if we see the price to break out from here. We basically turn from very bearish to kind of neutral. And what's also interesting to note is that the price increase here happened while trading volume did not increase. And that's in general a positive sign. You want price increases with low trading volume because that basically means there are more buyers in the market without increased attention. The opposite would be when we have very high trading volume. So we've got low trading volume before, then we get a spike in trading volume. And that's usually dangerous short term because this is just increased attention, maybe newspapers reported about Ethereum, maybe some other kind of push. And this attention is fleeting, right? It goes from asset to asset. And so when there's a lot of attention with price increases, that's dangerous because then attention goes away again and the price goes down. But recently the price increase here happened without increased trading volume and that's positive. So we see the price breaking the 23 day moving average. And with this positive momentum, I wouldn't be surprised if we also break the 39 day. So let's see where it's going. Nobody knows for sure, obviously. This approach isn't perfect either, right? Who knows if backtested moving averages will work in the future. We can see that also using the 23 day moving average, the best moving average, we did have a time where our portfolio line was falling. So we do have negative trades using this strategy. Nothing is perfect, but you need to start somewhere, right? And this is currently my best guess. I think currently it's not too bad to make an investment. Of course, this might change, right? If we suddenly see a big crash, sentiment can shift very rapidly. But for the time being, this doesn't look too bad to me. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give this a like. YouTube will then share the content to a new audience. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe. I publish a video two to three times every week. And last but not least, if you've got Telegram, join our group. It's spam free. I answer questions over there. We discuss crypto over there. So if you're looking for a small community that's not just pumping small coins, but that's actually discussing deeper topics, this is the place to be. Bitcoin strategy channel on Telegram. See you next time. Bye-bye.